Hi everyone and welcome to this new video tutorial. Today we are going to build a multiplayer to-do list with live blocks, React and the stand. So let's jump into the code. You can find this tutorial on our website. I will put every link that you need in the description. I've created a new project using the npx create react app command. This one will create a brand new React project and will start to code from this project. My project is created. I'm going to open it on WebStorm, my favorite IDE. So I'm going to launch the project using the start script on my package.json. After that, I will install three packages. The Storm, which is a state management library, LiveBlocks client and LiveBlocks the Storm, which is our extension for using the Storm with LiveBlocks. Okay, so now that my packages are installed, I will create a new file, store.js. So let's import the create function from the Storm. We'll also need the create client from LiveBlocks client. and the middleware from LiveBlocks the stand. The middleware will be used to add a LiveBlocks feature to the stand. After that, we'll create a new LiveBlocks client using the create client function. And as always, we'll need a public API key. I'll go into the LiveBlocks dashboard to retrieve my public API key. As you can see here, I can use the reveal key to get the key value. Now that my uh, LiveBlocks client is created, let's create a store which will be used by the stand. For that, we'll need the create function from the stand and we'll pass the middleware as a parameter. The middleware function will take a function as a first argument. This function allows us to modify the store but we will see that later. The second argument will be an option object. In this object, we'll pass our client as a property. This will allow us to connect our sustained middleware to LiveBlocks. Now we can export our useStore variable and then our store is ready. Let's open our app.js file. First thing we'll need to do is to import React and use effect from the React package. After that, we'll use use store from our store file. We'll also let the app.css import as is, and then we'll start to implement our new application. The empty app is working, as you can see on the right of the screen. So let's dive into our code. We'll have to use the use store function from our newly created store to spread some new variables. The first one will be live blocks, from which we'll extract enter room and leave room. Those two functions allows our application to connect to a specific room and also to disconnect. After that, we'll create a new use effect. Don't forget to add enter room and leave room as dependencies of this effect. If you don't do it, every time something changes in the application, you will create a new connection to LiveBlocks and you will have an infinite loop that will crash your application. With the enter room function, our application will be able to connect to a specific room and the key passed as parameter is the ID of the room. We also create to do's array as parameter of enter room, which will be our uh, key for the storage. Then to clean up the, the effect, we will have to return a new function and inside this function will leave the room. It means that every time you unload the application, you close the connection to the room. 
I'll extract the room name in a new constant to make sure that we don't have some typos. So let's create a new component which will be named with here. His role will be to display if there is other users on the room. For that, we'll have to use the use stores. So the functions that we pass on our use store function as a parameters will allow us to get the others variable. This one is a key one in the presence. It is the one that we are using to detect if there is any other people in the same room and it is synchronized with the presence block. After that, we'll interpolate the others user count value and then we have a brand new component that we can use on our to-do list app. So let's open a new tab to see if the code is working properly. As you can see, we have one other user online because we have two tabs open. Then I will get the app.css file that we, you can find in the tutorial to improve the design of our to-do list. Just make a copy paste and here we are. Let's go back on our store.js file and make some improvement. First, we'll create a new variable on our store, which will be named draft. The draft is the value that we are typing in the to-do input. After that, we'll add a is typing property and a set draft method. The is typing will be connected to the presence when someone is typing or someone has a non-null draft. And the set draft method will be used to set our draft value inside our store. After that, we'll add a new option on our middleware options. The property is presence mapping. The bindings will tell to the middleware that we are using the is typing property from our store to synchronize it with the presence. It is very interesting how simple it is to add new variable in our presence and you will see that later that it is the same for our storage. After that, we'll create a new component to display if someone is typing in the to-do list application. To get the others variable, we'll have to use the use store and pass a function as a parameter. This function will be able to select the specific others variable from our live blog store. To see if someone is typing, we'll just have to make a new filter on the others array variable. and then check if someone has the value is typing to true. If someone has uh, the is typing variable to true in the presence, we will return our component. So let's use our new component inside our application. First, we'll extract the draft value from our store. Then we'll also use the set draft method. After that, we will create a new input and the input value will be connected to the draft value from our store and will stop on specific events. The unchanged event, which means every time 
someone is typing something in the input will update the draft value will be used with set draft method from our store we'll pass the even the target value to update the value of the draft after that we just need to add our newly created component someone is typing and we will test the code as you can see on the right i'm starting to type on the first window and the second one will display a new message saying that someone is typing Now we are ready to implement the to-dos. We'll add a new to-dos variable, which will be an array in our store. We will create a new function in our store, which will be named add to-do. This job will be to take the draft that we updated with the set draft method from every changes made on the input and push the value in our to-dos array. After that, we will also need to reset the draft value to an empty string to get a consistent state. Let's add the delete to-do function in our store. We will just need an index, which will be provided by the caller. And the function will just remove the specific to-do from our to-dos list in the state. For now, we have a classic store implementation with the stun. The next thing to do will be to put our store values in the storage from LiveBlocks. To do that, we will just have to add a storage mapping in our client options. So let's create a storage mapping object in our options and then we will set to do's to true which means that the middleware will map the to do's value and put them in the live block storage block. In our app.js file we will extract to do's, add to do and delete to do from our store. The next thing will be to use the is storage loading variable from the live blocks object this one is required because when you do the first rendering the storage will not be loaded to avoid getting a new react error will display a loading placeholder after that we'll use the on key down event on our input which means every time we type a key, the event is triggered. We'll just have to check if the key uh, typed is the enter one, which means we want to put a new to-dos in our list and we'll call the add to-do function. We don't need to pass a parameter to the add to-do function because uh, the function will use the draft value saved previously on the unchange event. After that, we will need to display all the to-dos that we've saved in our storage block. For that, we'll use the to-dos and return a new component for every to-do. The component will contain a button on which we'll use the onClick event to call the deleteToDo function from our store. To delete the good one, we'll have to pass the index of our to-do. And voila, our to-do list app is ready. So let's test the application. I have two tabs open and I can add some new value. And as you can see, it is synchronized in real time and other users can see everything that's happening.
as you can see with other windows open it is working and we can also delete some to do using the uh, delete button if you want to see the data that you've saved on the storage block you can go on the dashboard and open the rooms tabs use the room id to select your room and you can see the storage values that you've saved in the storage block i hope you liked this video feel free to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel until then i see you in the next one bye